Hello and welcome to Captain's Dry Dog and this is one that I've been looking forward to for quite some time. Drawing a cutaway of the famous vehicle from Warhammer 40k, the Lehman Russ. That's right, we're going to see what's inside this little beauty. Let's make it so. Although this vehicle is from the fantasy world of Warhammer 40,000, it's scattered with details that reflect real world tanks that no doubt were influenced by the designers at the game's workshop. So it made sense to research real tanks, especially ones from the early 20th century. And being based in the UK, I'm lucky to have access to the world's best tank museum, the Bovington Tank Museum, not far from Stonehenge, and I highly recommend you check it out. Taking lots of photos, you can immediately see how the Games Workshop designers incorporated the look of the early 20th century tanks, such as this really early tank from World War I, with its exposed tracks, rivets, sponsons, to get an idea what a real world tank looks like on the inside, there's an incredible display of a Centurion tank cut directly in half, and you can see clearly how much limited space there is in the tank. While I was there, the gear shop sold one of the best reference books I've ever seen. The photos of the tanks in their collection were of super high definition and came with all important internal images of tanks. My method of illustrating is a combination of traditional pencil and paper, which is a personal choice because I love that texture, and combining it with Adobe products such as Photoshop and Illustrator. First, I draw the entire exterior of the tank. Then I use a rubber, or should I say for our North American friends, a razor, to bravely carve out sections I think would be fun and interesting to draw inside. Yep, I know, I'm not a natural super quick drawer, hence the fact you won't see me draw too much except for the odd little bit of time lapse which I use on my phone, as my method is pretty much draw enough lines and use enough erasers and the design will suddenly start appearing. Now, I don't aim to make the pencil sketch perfect, just a base to start from when I make it digital, as I can always change elements later without further covering my floor with eraser dust. I've only got an A4 scanner and I could scan this in sections and stitch it together in Photoshop but that would be a faff. And as seeing as I'm only using this as reference, a photo from my phone will do. To make sure I take the picture perpendicular from the paper, I use the set square as reference as I don't want the picture to look skewed when I try and trace it later. This is then opened up in Photoshop so I can make the lines clearer by making them darker using levels. Then it's placing Adobe Illustrator on a layer with 50% tin so it's easier to see when I'm tracing. Another layer is made to trace the drawing. Once I'm happy, the entire drawing is converted to live paint which mimics what Microsoft Paint used to be like where you just click on the elements which are enclosed and it adds the colour really easy and it's great fun. At this stage I'm not going to add any shadows or try and make it look real. The most advanced thing I'm going to do at this stage is just change the shading on the surfaces so it reflects its angles. Yes, I know, the inside may disagree with what you think it should look like on the inside of a Lehman Russ, especially those out there, yes, you know who you are, ex-military or people who have actually been in real tanks. I've had that feedback from you guys as well and I completely understand. Uh, I was a cadet in the Royal Tank Regiment so I know the inside of the tank it's cluttered and there's a lot going on in there. However, this model is actually out of scale. In fact, most of the Warhammer 40K models, or should I say the old ones before they started rescaling things, uh, it, this is meant to have a minimum of four crew. And this particular one, with all the options, it's got to have more crew in there than four because it's got uh, side sponsons, each one is manned, then you've got the front gun, you've got the driver, and you've got the commander. And I do believe this has an automatic loader, so you don't have a loader in there, but it's a lot of people inside this little tank. And one of the reasons I think it is uh, out of scale is because if this was in scale and you've got four or five of these on the tabletop, that's going to take up quite a lot of tabletop, let alone having to transport these from one games workshop site to another or to one friend's house to another uh, without breaking them. So that's why they're slightly smaller than what they should be when you compare them to the figures that come along with the uh, Lehman Russ. Now, 
artistic license has been used for many, many, many years, since the Renaissance, even before that, where the artist will actually uh, manipulate perspective and colors and whatever they can to actually end up with a final image. Now, if you built that image, it probably wouldn't work out just as much as this Lehman Russ. If they built this, I guarantee the inside, perhaps there wouldn't be enough room for crew, let alone all the bits and pieces which they need to operate it. So that's when I start that's why I need to use the imagination. Now, this is the fun bit. This is the creative bit. It's when you can start manipulating things to make things look like that they can work. So yes, there's a lot of inaccuracy in there if this was gonna be real. However, the idea is about it looking like it could work. Because after all, it's not a diagram to be actually made in real life. It's just giving someone the imagination of going, wow, that looks really cool. That looks like that thing could work. And that's the whole objective about drawing something like this. It's not a diagram, it's an artistic piece of work. Now, I know it looks, shall we say, CGI, as in it's too clean and it uses flat colors and looks like a cartoon. But in Photoshop, this is where it comes to life. Opening the file in Photoshop, I play with the levels to make the colors warm and deeper. And then I use a combination of the burn tool and painting in darker shades to mimic shadows, making sure not to go too overboard, especially with that burn tool. To make it pop, subtle highlights are added on all the edges where the light catches. As I wanted to make it feel as if it's real, I added weathering and found out that actually my old model making skills were gonna shine through for my experience of knowing where to put paint chips, mud and rust just as if it was a real tank. This really brought the illustration to life and gave it a story. And just for fun, I added the Astra Militarium Codex. No doubt this would be useful for the commander, but then I realized I might have to update that later on down the line when Games Workshop released yet another update. To add the labels and icon elements, I placed it back in Illustrator. But to help give it a narrative, I added a very washed out background of a ruined landscape, which really sets the mood of where this vehicle would operate in. So here's a top tip. Now, if you need to get something checked, and I don't mean spell check or grammar, I'm talking about all the information that you've included in your drawing, because you want to make it look great and make it look real, uh, upload it. Now, I use platforms such as Reddit or Imgur. Uh, you can use other forms which specialize in, shall we say in this example, tanks, and you're guaranteed you're gonna get comments. Yes, granted, it is the internet. You will get comments which may be quite negative, but there'll be plenty there which are constructive criticism and don't take that as a negative use that as a positive you may need to get a thicker skin but I guarantee you it will make your drawing really really accurate and better now I'll give you an example I did another poster design of a Shamira transport ship from the same world of 40k and there was this tiny little detail which I labeled as I think it was a shock absorber anyway within a couple of hours of uploading it I had plenty of comments and one of which was from a gentleman who said that's incorrect. It's actually a track tensioner. Who's to know? It's a fantasy vehicle. However, as we most of us know, Games Workshop designers do actually reflect or, shall I say, get their research from par, uh, tanks from early 20th century. And they do use elements from those tanks, one of which is a track tensioner. So thank you for that gentleman there because it actually made this even more real, it, it made it feel like it could exist because those parts are described accurately as if they were built now. <laughs> so thank you. And uh, yes, the internet is your friend. Just ignore those, yeah, those malicious comments.